Hi, I'm Julie from Rustic Cottage Co. I hope you like the video. Please give it thumbs up and comment in the comment section. That will help my little business grow. I love to create and do all different kinds of styles, rustic and farmhouse, industrial and small home decor too. I hope you enjoyed the video and learn lots of different techniques from me and I inspire you to create yourself. If you're local to me, I also sell. I'm in Chilliwack, BC, Canada and if you are local, please stop by and say hi. If you're anywhere else in the world, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Have a great day. I'm Julie from Rustic Cottage Co. Hello, hello, and this week I am going to get straight into doing a craft and see what else I get up to. Not sure if I'm going to go out this week or not, uh, it depends on what's going on with other things in my life, but I will definitely be doing some painting and I figured I will do Trash to Treasure. Now, you know, if you've been following me lately, um, that I've moved countries. I used to be in Canada, I was there for 30 years, and now I'm in the UK, back in the UK, where I actually grew up, and now I'm back again. Anyway, this week I'm doing a trash to treasure, Canada style, but what we'd probably call here in the UK, rubbish to re rejuvenated, shall we call it? <laughs> Let's get used to these new terms, or the old ones that I used to know. So I've got some garbage here, recycling, or what you'd call rubbish in England, and I'm going to turn it into something that's a little bit useful. As you know, I've got one small room to myself right now. I'm living back with my parents as they are a little bit older, I'm gonna be helping them out. And I have my own room, but it's not my style, so I'm slowly turning it into my style and then completely changing it around. And because it's such a small room, I'm using all the things I can find to um, store things. So this is a margarine container that has been used, emptied, and now I'm gonna change it up into something different. So let's get painting. Now I'm gonna paint this up um, as is. Um, I'm gonna paint the top and the sides and the bottom. The inside I'm just gonna leave. It's just a basic margarine carton that you would usually generally throw away or put into recycling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it first with this dark, it's a, a gray color, Rust-Oleum, and quick drying gray. And it says dark gray, but I would call it more of a medium gray to what I'm used to. Anyway, I'm going to open it up and get painted and cover the whole thing first coat. So I've already painted first coat on the lid and I'm gonna just let that dry and what I'm gonna do is now paint the sides and the bottom of this part. Now I'm doing this gray because I want to try and see if I can wet distress back to it. And also if I put a dark coat on first, it'll be easier to hide um, the actual pattern underneath rather than just put the term um, white on first. So, just gonna go over the whole thing. It's gonna take more than one coat. It is plastic, so it's gonna take a little bit to cover, but it's gonna look good in the end. So just give it one full coat and leave it to dry. There we go. When that's dry and adhered, then and we will be putting on the second coat. And uh, then we'll be doing a clear coat so that when we wet distress back the top coat of the white, we will be only wet distressing back to the gray. So we're gonna get that next. But for now, this is gonna dry and uh, I'll get back to it soon. So I have completely covered this in uh, the uh, grey chalk paint and 
I have already put over a clear coat um, over the grey just to protect that. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to uh, paint two coats of white on top. Now the reason I put the clear coat on is that I want to wet distress back, which I'll explain a little bit better in, in, while I'm doing it, but I want to wet distress back to a little bit of the grey underneath to give an older look to the piece. So what I'm going to do here is get my brush and just give, I'm using white chalk paint from Rust-Oleum, give it a good shake and then just do the whole thing with the white, just covering everywhere and the first coat just slap it on, second coat we can do it a little bit more gentler and making sure we cover everywhere. I've done this technique many times, uh, first time in this country, as I've kept saying, I have recently moved back to where I grew up in England. So I've, I've moved away from Canada and back to England, being close to my parents, my sister, and just enjoying being back where I grew up. And uh, now I'm crafting in the garage of, well, my dad's old garage. And uh, yeah, getting myself motivated and going, trying to find inspiration in the area. What I've been doing recently is um, looking up where to get transfers and stencils and napkins, a bit more local, um, you know, because obviously my usual suppliers the um, shipping would be horrendous and then that would have to reflect on the actual piece in the long run. So right now I'm just looking for a little bit more local stuff and what's in fashion. Anyway, I've done that one first coat on, leave that to dry. Now I'm not doing just this this week, so I figured I was donated this actually by my mom. She had it in her shed and I think it's amazing. There's not much I want to do to it, but what I thought I would do to it is do a little bit of dry brush on it. So I'm just gonna use the white linen paint and just dry brush over the whole thing. So all different directions, give it some age. And just dry brush, um, dry brush meaning obviously just as it says, the brush is dry, there's not much paint on it. So it's just giving a little bit of a white coverage rather than painting the whole thing. So just a little bit over and if you find you've got too much just use a damp cloth and wipe back and if you obviously don't have enough just add more paint to your brush and I always do the dry brush kind of last because it helps you kind of empty your brush of any um, paint that's on it so easier for clean up on your brush anyway and I find the, the less you have on your brush, the better, the older the effect is looking. And I like that, so. In all directions gives not only coverage, but also a little bit of um, texture to your finished look. Make sure you go over the handles too. I'm not doing the inside, so I'll find a nice plant to put in it. And this also will be going into my bedroom as I carry on giving it the look that suits me. So I'm gonna let that one dry too. And that one 
one's pretty much done. I will put a clear coat over the top of that as I will be putting a plant in there and while I'm uh, watering the plant, obviously water-based paint will just run away. So I'll do, I will put a clear coat over it just to protect it from when I'm watering plants that go inside it. So those two I'm gonna to leave to dry and uh, then the first one here obviously needs a second coat. So I will be back to do that. So these two are, I mean, they're not fully dry, they're slightly um, damp, but what I'm gonna do now, I'm just using a, like a baby wipe and I'm just going to, while it's still quite damp, I'm just going to rub back. It's easier while the paint is just a little damp and I'm just rubbing back and it's gonna rub back literally to um, the gray. It won't rub further back because we put the clear coat in between. So this is what we call wet distress, meaning a damp cloth or baby wipe as this is. And just wiping back the white chalk paint and it's easy to do because it is uh, water-based. And we're just wiping back literally to the coat underneath um, which is protected because we did put the clear coat over the top. So I'm just going round the edges and just wiping back. And this just gives it that little bit of an older look. Now in here, I'm just going to again, just wipe a little and just reveal a little of the uh, gray. underneath just in places and just as I say it gives that little bit of an older look to it um, and there's the lid done and now I'm just going to go around the actual base part here too just in places that maybe corners, edges, that would be worn just a little. The bottom doesn't matter, but just try and get a little bit of the gray poking through. And as you say, you can wait for it to dry completely just the longer it dries, just a little bit harder it is to wipe back. And with this being quite a delicate piece, being that it's not fully strong plastic, um, I just figured it'd be easier to just wipe back while it's still a little bit damp. And let's turn it around a little bit more. And then you want to wait for it to completely dry. I am going to try and put uh, a stencil on it to give it a bit more kind of um, look to it, a little bit more shabby chic look for it. And uh, add that on when it is dry, the stencil. And uh, give it a little bit more uh, texture, interest and a little more of my style. A bit more. There we go. I'm just gonna wait for that to dry. And then when this is finished, I'm, as I said, I'm gonna put um, a clear, uh, a stencil on and then a clear coat on. And uh, that should be good. All right, so I'm going to put some stencil on the top and a little bit around the sides. I'm gonna to have to really push down to make sure it doesn't seep through. So I'm just gonna take my time on this and uh, really get it in there. And I don't have a proper actual stencil brush, so I'm just really gonna kind of really take my time on this pushing down.
in the areas I need to go. You want a really dry brush when you stencil, but it's not easy to do. Just gonna try and put it back here. It didn't quite do perfectly, so let's see if I can put it back. And again, I'm just gonna put a stencil on the side of this and see what I can fit on here. Something small, I think. Now on this one, I'm actually going to be doing, um, putting a stencil on, and then just put this one on here. And instead of using paint, I'm using my wet cloth, and where the stencil is, I'm actually rubbing away the paint just where the stencil is. And just to give it that kind of illusion of the background being the dark color. time with it, rub it away, and as I say, instead of literally putting another colour on top, this just wipes away some of the white. So we have Paris and just a little bit of interest of some words on it. And then this one here, we have some words on the top, Paris on the bottom, and I'm just going to, just ever so slightly, if it's dry, let's make sure it's dry, I'm just going to just go over it a little with some sandpaper, just to make it look as though it's not just being stenciled on right now and wear it down just a little bit. makes it look like it's been worn in um, just a little bit and there we have two little containers one that we dry brushed and this one used to be a margarine container and uh, I'm going to do a clear coat on both of them and stage them up Thank you for watching, I'm Julie from Rustic Cottage Co.